Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Jimmy, and today we're going to be doing episode 7 review of Steins Gate. So as you may or may not be able to see, I've changed a few things with the lighting. Um, I hope that it's a little bit better, or whatever, I don't know. If you guys think you can suggest anything that would maybe help it a little bit, that would be great. You know, anything like that would be great, so. Alright, let's jump right into the episode. So, the episode starts off with Halloween and pretty much just everyone else kind of talking about the time machine and some kind of experiments that they could do. Um, some things that they maybe could fix about it and then Halloween like rips the, the front door off of it. And so he goes downstairs to see if he can do the experiments because last time Mr. Braun went crazy and freaking flipped out on him. And so what happens is he meets up with a part-time girl and they have a little conversation and he meets uh, Mr. Braun's like daughter and a couple of other things. So after he talks to the part-time girl, it's sort of like an invitation to just do a whole bunch of experiments. And he starts the experiments off with um, by saying that he's going to try and change the past. And when I was first watching it, I was like, alright, the guy that time traveled, uh, John Teeter, he said that if you try and change the past, you change a world line, and then you're not in the same, like, you're not in the same time anymore when, once you do it. So I'm thinking to myself, like, is he an idiot? Does he realize that he's probably going to get, like, d taken somewhere else? So they start performing the experiment um, to see if they can change the past. And they come up with this experiment to send the lottery numbers back in time so they would win the lottery. And there's a few funny scenes where um, Halloween is like, no, don't get the freaking huge giant one. Get, like, the smaller one. Two hundred million. Whoa, Daru, hold on. That's a little much, yeah? Say what? Well, hitting a jackpot of that size would only serve to draw unwanted attention to ourselves. What a total chicken. So he also has another moment when he's, like, reconsidering if he should send it or not because he doesn't know if he wants the uh, world lines to change. Like, he doesn't know what could happen, but he sends it. He sends a text message, changes the past, and when he comes back, like, when he comes back to... He wakes up in a completely different world. The world he wakes up in is one where he didn't send the text message. But he did receive the text message. And after apparently, which seems like, it kind of seems like it, after he got the message, he gave it to the girl that looked, the boy that looks like a girl. He gave that to them. And so he was like, oh, let me go put them in. And when he put him in, he he forgot one of the numbers. So he did no. So no one won the lottery, but the message was received by itself. That literally means that he changed the past. He traveled a text message back in time, changed the past, and then got teleported or time ported to another place in time. Then after going through all the stages of denial and all that stuff. Halloween finally realizes he's been teleported or time-ported to another world line. After he realizes that, he tries questioning people to see what they remember and what's different. First of all, the coke or the soda or whatever is different. I didn't mention that before, but it's different. And no one remembers the experiment. And the part-time girl never heard the, like, rumbling of the experiment, so they didn't even do the experiment. After that, Hoenn pretty much comes to terms, he knows, and the part-time girl, saw, along with a scene where she thinks that he's been mind-washed or brain brainwashed and all that, she, like, looks into his eyes and, like, tries to see if he's been brainwashed, which once again, kind of makes it look like she was in some kind of terrorist organization or some kind of war situation, something that, like, you get brainwashed in. Then, Hoeen takes the advice from part-time girl to contact John Teeter. He actually does. And John Teeter is just like, My goal is to save the future. And you may be the only one who can do it. Kilma, I ask you... <laughs> To be our savior. That's right. Be the savior. 
he reads in one of the text messages that it's impossible or it seemed impossible for somebody to travel through world lines and continually remember the past, the other world line that they originally came from. And so while they're talking about that, it flashes to the girl that has all the social issues and she's like on the phone, which kind of makes me think maybe she's from another time line, maybe. And maybe the reason why she's all like, like a recluse and all like weird is maybe she's like traveling through timelines like crazy and her phone is like the only thing that comes with her and her memories and stuff like like maybe her memories are like like partial memories or something so she can only remember certain things and the pictures like help her maybe that i don't i don't know maybe that could be a prediction so maybe that is happening so anyway i kind of speed this episode up because i felt like the last episode sort of was just a summary of what happened and then I really didn't get my opinion in there. So this is going to be the part where at the end I'm going to put my opinion in and maybe shorten the episode with the beginning summary part. So there's probably about three things, two things that I want to talk about here. The first one is the weird attraction between Hoenn and Christina. Maybe it's just me, but like Hoenn tells everyone to go home and Christina doesn't. So maybe there's something there, maybe there's not, I don't know, maybe I just maybe I just want Hoenn to be that one character that falls in love with all of the girls. The other thing I really want to talk about is the method of time travel. Because sometimes in some world lines, John Teeter is alive, and the other ones he's not. Which kind of makes, makes me think that maybe he's trying to prevent a future that wouldn't happen in the other world lines. Like the world lines that he's not in. Maybe CERN really isn't the bad guy in those world lines. Or maybe they're even more of a bad guy. And, and I, I don't really I don't really know. And the third thing is kind of a prediction or maybe something that could happen. So Hoenn has always been like afraid of time travel, or at least to me it seems like he has, because he's been having all these weird like flashes to like all the uh, like becoming a jelly person. And I feel like because John Teeter said like he's the only one who can bring his memories back with him, maybe maybe there's going to be some kind of conflict where he doesn't want to go time traveling to save the future or whatever. Or maybe not. Maybe he'll just do it and be the superhero of time travel or whatever. Alright guys, girls, and guys, thanks for watching. Uh, episode pretty much is over and... Uh, Tell me how you like the new summary versus kind of my opinion thing. And I uh, guess that's about it. Don't forget to hug it, okay? Huh, <laughs> here all smiles again. <clears throat> <sighs> yeah. One, two, three, now you're recording. Now you're in here. Get in here, look. <laughs> I like where you're doing my glass.